So over the past three weeks, we have seen where Paul has spoken to those, he's written to those who are the church of Ephesus about growing together. We, we have seen him talking about love, talking about unity, how they are to become one, how they are to uplift each other, how they are to help each other prosper spiritually in life. And so on that note, we'll see where here in our first lesson for the month of February, where Paul, he turns his attention to spiritual living. He wanted to again, get the minds of these believers who are in the church, get their minds off of just physical living. Again, we are more than flesh and blood. When God created mankind, we're told in the second chapter of Genesis that he breathed into mankind's nostrils and we became a, a living soul, that we became living beings. Unfortunately, Many of us who live in the world today, we, we don't think of ourselves as, as spiritual beings. We see us, we see the physical, and that's what we are hung up on. We are hung up on the color of the skin, right? We, we are hung up on what somebody looks like, their, their physical attributes. But, but the reality of things is that we are more than what we see. We, we are more than what meets the eyes, right? You've heard that saying before. We are spiritual beings who are heavily influenced by the spiritual realm. That is what Paul wanted believers of the Church of Ephesus to know. That is what he would want believers to know today as well. And so we'll see here in our Sunday School lesson this week, there in the 10th verse, that to those who are of the church in Ephesus, Paul encouraged them to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Now I want you to understand that Paul was not saying that just to say that, okay? There is meaning behind this saying here. As we'll see, he's gonna be talking about a very serious matter here in our lesson this week. We'll see it begin there in the 11th verse, where Paul, he said to the believers who were in that church to put on the whole armor of God in order to be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. That's talking about the deceptions, the, the cunning craftiness of the devil. Paul was letting the believers who are in this church again know that they are more than the physical. We, we again, yes, the physical plays a role in, in our life, but the spiritual, it plays a major role in, in our life. And we'll see there in the 12th verse, that Paul, he said to those who are in this church and to believers everywhere, that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. A lot of us, we think that, that our biggest enemies are our haters. And a lot of times when we talk about our haters, we talk about those who are of the flesh, right? But Paul will see there in the 12th verse that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. That's not really our enemy. Paul said that we wrestle against principalities. We wrestle against powers. We wrestle against rulers of darkness. We wrestle against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. I want you to think about this for a moment in what we have been discussing the past few weeks here, where again, we saw in the church of Ephesus, where, where there were believers who were Jews who were looking down on believers who were Gentiles who were calling them uncircumcised in a derogatory manner. And when they were doing this, they were creating a divide in the church where, where they were tearing the church up apart. Who do you suppose was behind that? Again, spiritual host of wickedness in heavenly places. Our great adversary, Paul wanted the believers in this church to know that our great adversary, he lies in wait everywhere to attack us. We are part of a spiritual warfare that the devil has been waging since he was in heaven. The devil has waged war against God since he was in heaven. Scripture shows us that the devil, he thought himself to be higher than God. He thought that he could be a better God than God himself. And so he tried to overtake the Lord. He, he waged war against God in heaven. And then we see in scripture that the devil was cast out of heaven. And when God created mankind, we see in the garden that the devil was still there trying to wage war against God. How did he attack God? He attacked God by attacking Eve in the garden, 
by attacking Adam in the garden, by deceiving them in the garden. The devil to this day still wages war against God. How is it that he attacks God? Through us, through mankind. By, by again, tearing down, trying to tear down mankind. There are many people who foolishly believe today that the devil wants to uplift them. They truly believe that the devil is on their side. Imagine thinking, imagine believing that the devil is on your side. That is a scheme. That is a deception of the devil that many people have bought into today. They truly believe that the devil wants them to gain the riches of this world, when as we have seen in recent weeks, the devil doesn't have anything on his table. He doesn't have anything on his table for anybody that comes to his house. The devil does not want to see you prosper. The devil does not want to see you blessed. We must stop foolishly thinking that way. We are in a war today, a war that is being waged by the devil against God, where we, well, the devil essentially looks at us as pawns on the table who can be used against the Lord. And so we'll see here in our lesson for today where Paul, he tells us to be prepared to again, put on the whole armor of God to be able to stand against evil is what Paul said there in the 13th verse. Again, we must be prepared to, to endure the devil's attacks against us because the devil is attacking us for one intent, for one purpose, that is to tear us down, that is to, to destroy us. Again, you ought not want to be destroyed in your soul. I'm not talking about the devil wanting to destroy you physically. He not only wants to destroy you physically, he wants to destroy you where it really hurts the Lord, and that is in your soul. And so we'll see where Paul, he said there in the 14th verse, to put on the breastplate of righteousness, which is held up around the waist by the belt of truth. You are to put on righteousness. Righteousness, it should cover your heart. It should cover your soul. It should cover you, okay? If you, if you think about a breastplate, it covers the heart, right? It covers the chest, the most, the, the most vital organ in our, in our body. And so we must put on the breastplate of righteousness. Righteousness, it must cover our soul. How is it that we can put on righteousness? How is it that one can, can obtain righteousness? The only way that you can obtain righteousness is by going to the Lord. You can only obtain righteousness through, through faith. By again, that divine truth that, that it upholds that breastplate of righteousness. So we must go and grab that, that belt of truth. The truth being what God has said is truth. Not, not some subjective truth of the world, not some objective truth of the world. We're talking about the divine truth. So we must again seek the truth. We must obtain the truth from the Lord. You cannot become righteous any other way. Some believe themselves to be righteous without the word of God, but that's self-righteousness. Self-righteousness, that's not gonna do anything against the devil. In fact, the devil, if he see that you're self-righteous, He's gonna come around with a smile on his face and he's gonna pat that breastplate and say, hey, good job, friend. You, you essentially are just like him if that's the breastplate that you are walking around with. The believer, we must put on the breastplate of righteousness. We put, must put on the righteousness of God. And the only way that we can gain the righteousness of God is by again, receiving his word, receiving the divine truth. Now. We'll go on, we'll see that Paul, he says there in the 15th verse, Paul then said that believers should shot, they should put on their feet the gospel of peace. If you're going to stand against Satan, if you're going to stand against the devil, don't try to stand on hatred. Don't try to stand in hatred. You cannot answer hate with hate, can you? Many people have tried to defeat hate with hate, but again, the only thing that hate with hate begats is more hatred. And the world just becomes a place of hatred. 
in order for us to stand against the devil, in order for us to overcome the devil, we must stand in peace. And this peace is the peace that is of God, the gospel of peace. Not a peace that is of the world, but again, a peace that is of the gospel, that is of the Lord. When we stand in that peace, it will heap coals of fire. That's what scripture says. It will heap coals of fire on the head of our enemies. There in the 16th verse, Paul said that believers, they should then take with them the shield of faith. So we have the breastplate of righteousness, which is held up by the belt of truth. We should put on our feet the gospel of peace. And then again, he said there that we should take with us our shield. We have a shield as well that comes with our armor. The shield of faith, which Paul said there again in the 16th verse, is able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. So our shield, it not only catches those darts, but to quench means to, to put out. To quench means to extinguish. So our enemy is throwing fiery darts towards us. And when we take our shield and when we put that shield in front of us, it not only catches those fiery darts that hit against it, but it puts our, our enemies' attacks, it puts them out as well so that they will do no harm to us. Paul, he then said there in the 17th verse, to complete the protection of our soul, our body, Paul said that believers, we should then put on ourselves the helmet of salvation. When you think about this, this armor that, that Paul has spoken of, over our chest, over our soul, should be the breastplate of righteousness. So righteousness, it should cover our chest. It should, it should cover our soul. That, that righteousness should be held up with the belt of truth. We should, we should stand in peace and, and we should carry with us a shield, a shield that is of faith. And then on our heads, there should be salvation. And so figuratively speaking, what should be on our mind at all times? Our salvation should be on our minds. So salvation, if you will, salvation should be our hope. In other words, what should motivate us, what should move us, what should keep us encouraged is not the riches of this world. That's, what, that's what's on the minds of a lot of people. They are consumed with the riches of this world. But something that I preached about a few months ago is about what we hunger for. What is it that, that is on our mind? What is it that drives us? Salvation is what should drive us. That, that, that eternal home, that everlasting promise that we have in, in the kingdom of, of our Lord, that is what should drive us. That is what should keep us encouraged. That is what should keep us motivated. That is what should be our hope. Heaven should always be on our mind. I want you to understand something. The devil, he not only will try to attack you physically, he, he is going to attack that mind of your. He's going to always attack what is on your, your mind. And he's going to and try to, to influence your thoughts. We don't want our thoughts under the attack of the wicked one. And the best way for us to defend our thoughts is to, again, always keep heaven on our mind, to let salvation be our hope. And when salvation is always your hope, it'll be tough for the devil to break through your mind and to influence what it is that you are, are thinking about. So salvation, again, that should always be on your mind. Now notice there in that same verse, notice there in that 17th verse that, that Paul, he also tells us that we have a weapon as well, doesn't he? He tells us that we should carry the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. So when you think about it, soldiers, when they go out to battle on the battlefield, they not only have on their armor, but they also carry with them a weapon on the battlefield as well. You and I today, again, in this spiritual warfare, we are on a battlefield to where the devil attacks us 
and we should ready ourselves for this battle by, by putting on the whole armor of God. But the Lord doesn't simply leave us defenseless on this, this battlefield. He gives us a weapon to where we are able to go on the attack as well. And the weapon that we have is the word of God. And I'm not talking about you going around and carrying, you know, the word of God with you, you know, having your Bibles with you, thumping that Bible all the time. That's not what we're talking about here. The word of God, it should rest in your soul. The word of God, it should abide with you at all times. Think about how when the devil, when he tempted Jesus in the fourth chapter of Matthew's gospel, when you take a look at the third and the fourth verse, Jesus, he stood against Satan. He stood against the devil. When, when the devil said, hey, why don't you turn these stones into bread? And Jesus, he responded to the devil that, that man shall not live by bread alone. Man should live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God is what Jesus said. Again, we should live by the word of God, every word of God. When we look at the 10th verse in that fourth chapter of Matthew's gospel, at the last temptation that the devil uh, tempted Jesus with, Jesus said to Satan, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. Again, carry with you that word of God, live by the word, live by the truth live be steadfast in your faith just as jesus was and there in the 11th verse look at what satan did when jesus was was living by the word of god when jesus was going on the tack with the word of god look at what satan did there in the 11th verse in the 11th verse we are told that the devil left them and then we are told there that the angels they came and they they ministered to Jesus. We, I want you to understand today, there in that scripture, we have a very effective weapon that we can use against the devil. You know, a lot of us, we, we give the devil way too much credit. We, we try to make the devil out to be so powerful. Do you realize how powerful you are? Do you realize how powerful you are as a child of God? God has given you a great weapon to be able to combat the devil. But many of us, as I said recently, many of us, we let our weapon catch dust on the table. Many of us, we, 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 don't, we don't let the word of God rest in us. We let it rest on a bookshelf. We let it rest in the closet, in, the, in a dark place where it does nothing but, but catch dust. We, we, we must study the word we must be diligent in the word of god so that it can rest in our soul and so that the word of god can can grow in us so that again we can be able to stand against the devil just as jesus did not only has the lord given us the word of god as a weapon he's given us an even more powerful weapon that paul speaks of there in the 18th verse where paul he tells believers everywhere that we have prayer. Paul says that we should pray always with, a, with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Prayer is the most underused, I believe, weapon that God has given us to be able to, to go through life. It is underused, it is overlooked. Prayer is scoffed, prayer is mocked, with many saying, ah, what can prayer do for me? And that's so-called believers, professed believers, that will say, I don't pray. I, I don't feel I have to pray. Prayer doesn't work. There are many that will say that they believe in God, but they have never prayed a prayer. I tell you from my own personal experience that prayer, it can move mountains. Prayer can bring you out of, of places that, that you would think is impossible for you to come out of. And again, I tell you that from my own personal experience where again, I, I went through dialysis for five years and it seemed like it would be unending. But again, thanks to prayer, I'm able to, to be with all of you today, to be able to teach to all of you, to be able to minister to all of you today. Because again, God brought me out of my struggles. He brought me out of my afflictions. God did for me 
by attending to my every cry, by attending to my every prayer. Now, again, I want you to notice here in this scripture here that everything with the armor of God has been looking at this part of the body, right? Talking about the front. Again, we have that breastplate of righteousness. We again have that belt of truth. We have the shoes that should be the gospel of peace. We have the shield of faith on the head, right? Should be the helmet of salvation. But the back, that's not mentioned. Why is the back not mentioned? Well, you know, the, 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 the answer that we love to give is that God's got our back, right? And of course, yes, the Lord certainly does have our back, right? But there's another reason why the back isn't any concern for, for Paul with the, the whole armor of God. The reason being is that believers should never turn their back. We should never turn our back to, to our enemies. We are supposed to be of faith, right? And faith, it should always be moving forward. You as believers, you should always move forward. That reminds me of what Jesus said in the ninth chapter of Luke's gospel and the 62nd verse, where Jesus said, no one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. And so I would ask you today, are you fit for the kingdom of God? Is heaven on your mind? Heaven should always be on your mind. Heaven should be your target. Heaven should be your goal. We are on a battlefield to get to heaven. The devil is always going to be trying to block your path to get to heaven, throwing all his fiery darts of indignation, of anger against you always trying to make you fall into a pit, always trying to test you, trying to knock you off that, that course, knock you off the pathway to heaven. But again, God has given us armor to be able to, to take on those attacks because again, faith is supposed to keep moving forward. When, when the devil is throwing everything at us in the kitchen sink, we are supposed to stop and retreat. We aren't supposed to stop and, and turn around. No, that's what the whole armor of God is for. We are to keep moving forward on our journey. So I encourage you today, keep moving forward on this journey. Keep moving forward, wearing that whole armor of God. God has something for you if you keep moving forward. There is a blessing over that, that hill for you if you keep moving forward. There's a blessing over that mountain if you keep moving forward. And then again, there's an even greater blessing. There is salvation for all of those who keep moving forward. Again, I hope that you take all of this in here today. Get yourself ready to endure this, this spiritual warfare that again is taking place right now. Go get your armor, go get that whole armor, put on the armor of the Lord so that you can endure, so that you can persevere, so that you can overcome our great adversary and then be able to receive what God has for you. Thanks for watching this week's Sunday School lesson. I hope that you enjoyed this lesson. I hope that you'll share this lesson with someone somewhere. Now, if you haven't done so already, I ask all of you to, to follow our channel. Be sure that you follow this channel so that you don't miss a Sunday school lesson, so that you don't miss a Bible study, so that you don't miss a sermon or a food for thought. Be sure that you are following this channel today.